Tonight, Chris shows us his hideous Glocks. I try to destroy those Glocks, and we do math. Kind of how prevalent Glock is and the market share. It's all happening now on the 1911 Syndicate. Glock rules the world. And this pistol that costs right around $60 to make has had that title for, in my opinion, quite some time. As we're seeing right now with the release of the Echelon, every time a new pistol comes out, what do they compare themselves to? The Glock. And what do they try to call themselves? The Glock Killer. Today, we explore Glock. the five Glocks out here, the crazy thing, total value, $297 amongst the five guns. She's covered in mayonnaise head to toe. So, I mean, it's qualifies as a Saturday night. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> head to toe? Yeah, head to toe. Huh. All right, man. I gotta go drop a deuce. So, I'll grab this shovel. I'll be back in like 30, 30, 45 minutes. Thanks for telling me. I don't, I always tell them to use the bathroom before we come out here. I don't, I don't get it. as good as a shit. It was never about my shit. about this shit. Night, night. Sorry. How's it going, man? Sorry, sorry, sorry. 45 minutes? Yeah, I had to pick out some. Take out the trash, you know? Huh. All right, let's do it. Are you ready? Yeah. I got my Gen 5. Uh, you got, where's that Gen 4? You had it last. Black one? Yeah, with the stock sights the pla in it. The plastic uh, grip? Yeah. A Glock, yes. Stock sights on it? Yeah. It. I. We need it to film. It was relocated. So did you leave it by the targets then, or what are we talking about? I'll take you to it. Okay, yeah, I guess, yeah. Uh, we got jam mag, so let's go. Let's take the show. What's that for? What, uh, what are you looking at here? My friend, it's a tomb. Is, is this where you took a shit? There's, there's definitely garbage down there. Um, what are we doing? You wanna dig her up? I mean, I don't want to dig up your shit, no. So. I'm gonna knock over the headstone, right? Dude, what are we doing? No sign of disrespect. Dude, Jake, I don't... You always tell me about how big your shits are. I don't uh, want to see this. Here's the thing, man. You guys like to flex. Flex some people about reliability. What the shit? Uh, Seriously? Yeah, take this. You son of a bitch. Yeah, it's, it's good. So I think the... Uh-oh. Good I go. think the route would be less talk about reliability then, big guy. 
What are you talking about? It's functioning perfect. Well, let's get some rounds done. Okay. All right, so knocked a little of the dust off. Right, our first little part of reliability. Not been cleaned okay. though. Not been cleaned. We just knocked some of the dust off. Well, shit. Huh, interesting. Much like I would have imagined. Jake, welcome to the show today. I'm excited to be here. How you doing? Are you excited? I am excited to be here. Even though we're talking about... Oh, no. What are, what are we talking about today? Shit, I thought we were gonna talk, well. We're mind. talking about the king of all pistols, the pistol that rules the world. Clock. So before we get into that, Jake, we got to talk about belts. Specifically, let's see it. That Segura belt. You gotta whip it out. Whoa, whoa! It's like Bring a out, viper. Guys. It's like a viper. It gets snapped like, at any uh, moment. He's like Magic Mike. But uh, they're the best belts on the market. They have an inner light belt there that your battle belt or their battle wagon can go on top of. You know they what have... I'm saying though? This is why I like that. Cause yeah. that's how I move. Yeah. Well. And I need something that can move with me like that. There you go. The emissary belt's a little thicker, so it's not gonna quite move like that. No. But our code 9211 syndicate, all lowercase, no spaces, is gonna save you 10%. Money, okay. check them out. We've done a couple reviews, we'll link those below so you guys can go check those out. There you go. Hmm. Why are we talking about Glock? Because I think it needed to be visited, okay? Do you, do you, you don't agree? I mean, go on. So, I believe Glock is still the king of the striker fire polymer pistol market. Okay. And not only that, but it dominates the marketplace all around. They're extremely reliable. And with the aftermarket support that we have, you can make almost anything out of your Glock. And we're going to show you right? some reliability yeah. testing. We're going to get to that here in a bit. We, as we go. But first, we're going to jump into kind of how prevalent Glock is and the market share. And my first point is going to be price range. Okay. Now, am I allowed to say the price that I bought that for? Yeah. From where I bought it? That's okay. Uh, I wouldn't say where you bought okay. it, but just say the price. There's a local shop. It's YouTube, guys. It's yeah, weird. There's we never weird know. rules. I'm sorry, guys. Um, but it's a it's a local shop that I used to work at. Okay, they had a used Glock 17 Gen 4 for 3.99. That is part of my argument of why the market share is so dominated by Glock is price. Right out the gate, I thought I'd throw that out there. For 3.99, I got a used 17 Gen 4 with two mags. Okay, used, there was no wear marks on the barrel or anything. It has a little bit of wear and tear now, which yeah. you'll find out why. You're welcome. Another big point is that because of the way that they run these guns or the way that they're manufactured is, no matter what size you purchase, mm -hmm. almost all your accessories are going to work with that. Sure. Again, another thing of why they dominate the marketplace, mm -hmm. right? You can buy one holster, multiple models are gonna run on that holster. Getting into some of the stats about market share. So 48 countries have issued their military and or law enforcement Glocks, 48 countries. On all the forums I've read, because they're, we're getting into that a little bit later too, there's a ton of Glock forums. It sounds like that's the only ones that they publicly talk about. Hmm. Okay. okay. Because it, it, in reality, it feels like it has to be quite a bit more. Yeah, I, right? yeah, I would think so. I mean, yeah. that's basically a quarter of the world's countries. Yep. Specifically here in the U.S., we have 18,000 law enforcement agencies, roughly. About 65% of those have been issued Glock at one point. God damn. That comes down to 11,700. Rough numbers, guys. Okay, go with us on this. Glock was the, this is a cool little tidbit here. Glock was the number one selling pistol on Gun Broker in 2020. Not shocked. What was going on in 2020, Jake? Chaos. How come? Well, we don't need to litigate that because again, it's YouTube and who knows how all that goes. But y you guys were around? Yeah. Um, the, the rough number was like right around 21.8 million guns sold that year. Jeez. Okay. Um, right around 12 million of those were pistols. Okay. So there's no way to really get a fixed number on that, but just to give you an idea of how much the market is dominated right that. So let's just say 12 million handguns sold in 2020, 25% of those were Glock. What does that bring us to? These are rough numbers. 25% yeah. of 12 million. Uh, 3 million. <laughs> I'm, I'm, so I I'm, thought you'd I'm, have to pull out the calculator. Nah, for I'm that. decent amount. So for reference on, on kind of market share and kind of where those numbers fit, let's go into another industry that we enjoy watches mm -hmm. and specifically luxury high-end Swiss watches. Kay. Okay. What comes to mind when I say luxury Swiss watches? I think your average person, even myself probably included would say Rolex. Rolex, which to give reference, everyone would assume Rolex is the biggest high-end luxury watch ever of all time. It is. It really only takes up though, 29% of the Swiss luxury market. 
Yeah, it's huge though. Huge, but in reference, we're going with Glock, right? Compare it to Glock. When you run those numbers of percentages, law enforcement agencies, it gives you an idea of how dominating Glock is in the market. You see, you see the correlation I'm trying to make? Yeah. Right? Okay. Did that make sense? Specifically in the US, Rolex takes up 40% of the watch market. One last reference I wanted to just state, right? And I did some math on this. Again, these are all rough numbers. Um, with the amount of Glocks produced, that basically gives us, if we do the math, one Glock for every 20 US citizens. So we're gonna get into a little history of where Glock came from, but before we did that, Jake, I want you to talk about the 1911 Syndicate. 1911 Syndicate is a great place to work, and you could ask all three of us, myself included, who works there. It's a great place to work, and it's a hospitable work environment. Uh, ho um, ho hostile? Depends on the day. <laughs> but uh, right now, we would appreciate it if you go to the website, 1911syndicate.com, sign up for that newsletter. It's a great way to stay in touch. Uh, we are working on a few different, like, kind of cool little releases we're going to do at the end of the year. Um, Patreon will get first access to that. We will you that straight up when it comes to either whiskey things or other shit we're working on patreon gets first dibs because those guys pay us for behind the scenes content and shit like that so they get first dibs yep beyond that if you guys need real estate help let us know if you don't know the 1911 syndicate is actually a real estate business go to the site and it will start to make sense all right so we've rinsed it off right Feels nice and clean now. So yep. next we have the launch test. Well, we both have dogs and you know, yeah. at the end of the day, like you, you gotta, can need something to play chuck it with. We can use a Glock. It's a cheap item that, you know, is pretty readily available. Sure. Yeah, sure. So. Let's, let's function, Jerry. <sighs> We're out. Let me try some. Let me try some stuff. Hang on, we can we can fix this. Yeah, let we me try can some. One hundred percent fix this. You, you need some power behind it. There it is. I'd be shocked if that throw is what killed this Glock. I'm out. We gotta find something good to rack it off of. There we go. There she is. I think we're good now. Let's go. Live to see another day. She lives. Let's kick it up a notch. So I think there's still some more dirt and stuff in here we need to get out. So let's grab the shovel. Okay. So it's summertime. Yeah. Summertime is the home of what sport? Uh, curling. Also baseball though. Oh, okay. Domestically, which is America's pastime. So I think today would be an appropriate time. Let's play some freaking baseball, everyone. Ball bat? Yep. Okay. That, okay. That went far. Well, this torture test just got real. <laughs> you did scratch my finish a little bit. Home run. All-star game. Yeah, that was a home run. Is the, are, are you pushing up the slide release? No. <laughs> That's Ken Griffey Jr. Uh, you, you guys know Ken Griffey? Come on, 90 skids? Yeah. Well, let's see if it'll cycle. Chambered around. Did it really? Yep. Wow. Here we go. <laughs> Trigger Trigger's lock. lock? Yeah, trigger lock. Uh oh. Trigger lock, yeah. So I think we're gonna need the bucket of water here. I think so. All right. Oh, oh whoa, look at whoa, him. whoa, 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 what's, what's going on? <laughs> They're doing each other. <laughs> Shoot it with your glove. They were up in my fucking grill, <laughs> God. I was like, nah. Those two have been banging for, that's the ones that I talked I about. I know, look, now they're taking a break. Wow. Dude, they are getting it on. So these two dragonflies are getting it on. Yeah. And the male has caught a grasshopper and he's eating it while he's uh, backdooring the female. Yeah, and I do mean backdooring. I mean, look at them, and they still can fly at the same time, which is even more impressive. And to tell you the truth, maybe there's some sort of system we don't know about where as he eats it, he disseminates the nutritional value to the, the woman. He shoots it into her? Yeah. It's part of the, the circle of life, uh, the load. Oh, 
can you get the slide off the frame? Trigger is trapped to the rear. Yeah. It won't reset. Oh, I see why. It's a little bent. It's completely warped. She's a little bent. She's a little bent. That's actually, it's actually pretty impressive. Are you, I mean, impressive. come on. So we got one more test, I think. Yeah. And we got to up the ante one more time. Let's pick it up. Let's go for a hike. And I mean, uh, up. All right, so uh, after the little repair work we had to do, right? We're, uh, we're in Utah. At altitude? Altitude. Altitude test. So we're clear, right? I think the baseball bat is actually gonna wind up being the, the most intensive of tests. I think you're right. All right, so this concludes our altitude test. Haven't picked it up yet. I think that fall helped it somehow. It did land right on the barrel. You can see there's mud, it landed like that. Yeah, so she should be fine here. I say we do a couple more tests by just throwing it straight up. Let's do two or three more. All right. This last one's just for my own personal. Should we call it the rage test? You know, rage. Okay. <laughs> Fuck you. That was a direct hit. I don't think you can kill it. Yeah. I don't know that it can be killed. Oh, shit. All right, Gaston. <laughs> well done. Well done yes, on the reliability. <laughs> I like to think we're on a first name basis. There you go. So late 70s, early 80s, the Austrian military was looking to replace their pistol, which was the Walther P38. And that had been in service since World War II. Yep. Okay. So Glock or Mr. Gaston Glock uh, at the time was working in a different industry, making like some plumbing fixtures, curtain rods, working with some polymers, things of that sort. Right. Rad, rad dude. Part of the testing that the Austrian military wanted to replace their pistol is it had to be chambered nine by 19 Parabellum, obviously, right? Uh, extended magazine capacity. It needed to be dropped from a height of two meters, which I think we achieved that a little bit later. It, minima, well, probably, we're right around yeah, two we'll meters. Say two me yeah, two, we'll two say two meters, two meters. Or six foot seven inches for us Americans, right? Uh, it had to be dropped from that height onto a steel plate and not discharge. Okay, which I think we dropped it, not on a steel plate, but we dropped it on some stuff. There was steel Steelwork involved at some right? point. Um, one interesting metric that I found was after 15,000 rounds shot, it then had to go to a higher PSI rating cartridge. So like a, a plus P like a plus, plus P. Yeah. cartridge yeah. and still fire with no issues. Okay. So standard nine mil ammo would have been right around 36,000 PSI. Okay, the plus P plus needed to shoot at 73,000 PSI. So quite a bit higher, mm -hmm. right? And still function and have no issues after those 15,000 initial rounds. And then also little trivia question for you. Do you know why that is called the Glock 17? I do, but I'm not gonna spoil it. I'm gonna let you say it. Oh, okay. Yes. I, didn't, I didn't think you knew. Well, my friend, I know things. So it was the G17 originally because it was the 17th patent that Gaston Glock had at the time. Yeah. Kind of cool, yeah, right? Gangster, how many, how many do you have right now? Glocks? No, patents. Oh, I, I can't disclose that. I have NDAs. Uh, well, yeah, same. So. Same. Yeah. So. Together, who knows how many we got. I'd say it's upward near 100. Plus. Yeah. So there's a fun little stat that I came up because I know you like these fun little stats. So 20 million Glocks sold. Okay. Let's say they're all Glock 17s. Just okay. for easy math. Okay. A Glock 17 slide is 7.32 inches. I rounded down to just 7 inches. Okay. Average 7 inches. We can all, well, I know 7 inches well. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, um, if we go coast to coast, the shortest route coast to coast in the U.S. is 2,300 miles, 2,300. Okay. Okay. If we convert that and do the math, that equals 20,818,286 Glock slides to cover coast to coast in the U.S. So you, if you laid out Glock slides for every Glock slide ever made, you basically stretch them across the entire U United States. Correct. A lot of Glock slides. Right? That's Which would make sense when companies come out, like Roke Concepts with a new holster, their first models they go for is what? Uh, it's a no-brainer. Glock. Yeah. How come, Jake? Because they stretch across the U.S. That's why. It's, it's, it's right? market, market share. A big part of the reason people like Glocks, the reason why I like Glocks is... And they had their heyday at one point of the Gucci Glocks, mm -hmm. where everyone and their mom was making custom Glocks, yeah. whether it was Salient, which you've owned. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 
I've owned several salients, uh, agency arms. I've owned a couple agencies. Yeah, I've had a couple Zevs. Hmm. Because the aftermarket support is so big that there's entire companies dedicated to just doing that. No doubt. Right? No doubt about it. Do you have a favorite that you had back in the day? Uh, truthfully, I think my agency and my Fowler were probably my two Glocks that I really enjoyed. Okay. Yeah. Which, getting into like kind of the idea behind that too is there's such a big aftermarket support for Glock, it's almost hard to know where to go. It is. <laughs> and some people might even just want a fully aftermarket gun. Mm -hmm. There's even Glock clone companies that do that, oh, such no. as Shadow Systems. Yeah. Who else do we have? Lone Wolf? Uh, Zev now. Zev? Yeah, Zev has the OZ9, which is basically a, a Glock, but you know, to my understanding, something to the effect of this is right, which is some of the patents expired, mm -hmm. um, where now it's like open source and anyone could basically make a Glock and call it. it a Shadow Systems or a Zev Z9 or whatever you want. Yep, that's how I understand it. Yeah. So yep. similar to when like 1911 patents came up, mm -hmm. right? Um, one of the biggest things that I do with Glocks that I buy now is I don't really go with the bells and whistles and all that stuff anymore. I just go with sights. And why is that, Jake? Because uh, the factory Glock sights are dog shit. Hmm. Do we know that to be a fact? I do. How come? Because I know. Because I've done it. All right, so one of the complaints, and I will say it's one of my complaints also, is the uh, Palmer sights. I call them placeholders. But let's just rack it off some stuff, right? Like, let's go for a belt. Still good? Yeah, go, go five reps on okay. that. I, you know. Five? Survived. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Shoe? Sure. Oh, I missed it. I don't think you have the hamstring flexibility for that there. Okay. But that tree right there. Tree? Good. So, that's what did him in. Propane tank. Yep, propane tank, not Glock certified. Okay. Right? Well, I think this is also important if you're ever at like a backyard barbecue or something and shit pops off and you've got a malfunction you need to clear, don't go to the grill. Don't go to the grill. That's, yep. ladies and gentlemen, good knowledge. Well, it's science is what it, yeah. what it is. One of the biggest changes I do is put on aftermarket sites because they shear off. And so I think, you know, getting to this one that I bought here, you buy that for $3.99. You can get the Trijicon HD orange sights, which a lot of people get, right? They're fine. Those are gonna run you right at around $137. Yeah. So over the third or quarter of the price of the firearm, you're upgrading sights, yeah, right? Yeah, this is my gun. The night vision ones are, I, I quite enjoy too, actually. Night vision, I, I was looking at kind of my favorite sights, the DeFore Performance. I tried those, yeah. You know Kyle DeFore? Uh-huh. Yeah, he's a firearms trainer. Yeah. Um, they're just blacked out sights and they run you $45. Oh, shit. Right. So for the weakest part of this platformer, you know, pistol in my opinion, for 45 bucks you can fix that. And then you have a pistol that is going to last you forever. You're going to be able to hit it with shovels, throw barrels at it, throw it off mountains, and it's still going to run. Not only that, but let's get into just a little bit behind <laughs> you. Not trying to beat a dead horse, but we have one, two, three... Four different holsters. We got the new Safari Land Incog X made with Haley Strategic, right? We got Mag Caddies, Rote Concepts. Again, came with a whole holster and Mag Caddy. Okay. Right? Point I'm trying to get at is you have so many aftermarket parts that it's almost annoying, right? It's a lot, man. <laughs> you don't know what to choose from. It's like when people start their Glock uh, stippling business or Glock slide cutting business or whatever. I'm almost like, dude. I get it, the market's huge, but it's like, there's so many people in it. Like, I have no idea how any sure. of you stand out. Sure. Last but not least, final part of aftermarket support is just the amount of forums, Jake. There are entire websites dedicated to just Glock. Mm -hmm. And these guys get to the point where they track serial numbers. So if you ask like, can I get an approximate of when my Glock was produced? What's the serial number? They can look it up in a database and give you like the month that it's produced. Jeez. Right? Yeah. Some, some real kind of in the weeds nerd stuff. But again, the idea is, one platform for $3.99. You can do anything you want to it. There's tons of aftermarket support. There's even dudes on the internet that will tell you everything you want to know about Glock. Kind of cool. Oh yeah, there's dudes right? on the internet tell you about all kinds of crazy stuff. So wrapping up why Glocks or why we did this video is to give a little bit of the backstory to make a case for why Glock still dominates the market today. 
And I think that it's pretty apparent from the numbers that we talked about to the aftermarket support to the reliability. Those are the main three reasons people choose Glock and why even you in your like top five guns for the apocalypse oh, chose God. a Glock. Yeah, I'm never going to live that one down. Not think. living it down. Well, you know, there's an expression that uh, exists mostly in the world of like, you know, business uh, where companies and banks and airlines and stuff, they, they get put in this category called too big to fail. Sure. And in my mind, the truth of the matter is that Glock is kind of in that category now. Um, but is it deserved? It? I, I, it's it's a tricky one for me because truthfully, the, the big issue that everyone has with them is they don't do anything new. So it's like, you don't deserve it from a meritocracy, meritocracy standpoint of like, you're trying and you're in the game and like, you're gonna move the needle. Like you don't, they don't deserve that market share. Okay. But it was almost like, look, they're first to the game. They've been doing it so long and it's somehow just been so, you know, adopted because of what you're talking about. The truthfully Glock is now too big to fail. Yeah. And any creator that makes a video that says, is this uh, whatever Springfield thing or yada, 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 you know, this is the Glock killer. It's not, it's not. So, so you, you literally took my last line from, from what I was going to say is even now we're, we're July 15th. The uh, Echelon just got released yesterday, yeah. right? Every single new polymer striker fire pistol that comes onto the market what is the metric that they always use? Yeah, Glock killer. This is the Glock killer. And has it happened yet, Jake? Of course not. It won't. They're too big to fail. It's, it's just the reality of it. And right? I believe that they deserve that title. They deserve the title of definitely like the the 10,000 pound gorilla or whatever that expression yeah. is. It's like, yeah, 100% yeah. you are because it's based on metrics and it's like adoption globally. There of you go. course they deserve it. Yep. Do they deserve it from actually making the best thing or the thing that's now pushing the needle or everything? No, absolutely not. Sure. It's like, as mentioned, it's like, I got a Glock 48 that Glock will only give me a 10 round mag for and some dude in a shed, I'm not, no shade, I don't even think that's true, but whoever runs Shield Arms, it's like some dude was just like, well, fuck it, I'll do it. I'll come up with a 15 round mag for it. Right. Like Glock could do that. They don't need to. True. They don't need to. True. True. And you know, if I did happen to get in a legally justified self-defense scenario with my Glock. Yeah. I have firearms legal protection. Yes. Which is concealed carry insurance. Yeah, and here's the thing. They have one of the little perks there uh, is like a replacement fee for your firearm. It's like, hey, if it's legally justified shooting, I think it's up to a thousand bucks yeah. that they cover. Yeah. And I always forget to mention that when we do these. Yeah. But it's like, hey, you're more than covered if you got a Glock. It's like, they're like, shit, man, we came out ahead on this one. Right. This one was 399. <laughs> 399, man, FLP doing good. That and our, our code 9211 will save you about a third off each package. You have the single man package. I have the married traveler package. So yeah. I get covered in all states that I am legally justified yeah. and able to carry in. Uh -huh. You just are covered in this state because you don't go anywhere. Yeah, stay single, so. kids. Stay yep. single, stay stay, stay legit, you know? And then um, last but not least, just stay tuned. We got a little treat for you after uh, the video ends. Thanks, guys. We're here to talk about Gaston Glock, the guy that makes these beautiful things, right? The Glocks, the things we love, the 17s. 45s, the 19s, the 43Xs. We love them all, right? But do you have his biggest product? And I mean biggest product? Horse semen. Gaston Glock's been slanging horse semen. All these years, we always get these new, hot, newest, hottest products. Ain't no way I know got the semen. You guys up to date? You guys slanging the shit? You got it? I don't think so. Gaston Glock, horse semen. Check it out.